Imagine having a second option that can make a shot like this. Looking in for Irving. Irving for the win! Oh my God! A South Yes, that is the Dallas Mavericks' second option, making a 20-foot running left-handed hook shot for the win. And the reason he's the Mavericks' second option is because their first option can make shots like this. Late in the shot clock, four seconds, got it from Kleba, again late in the clock, in desperation. <laughs> And when you have two of the greatest shot makers ever, your team is generally going to be pretty hard to defend. But as a team, Dallas is starting to find a rhythm at exactly the right time. Because over the last 12 games, the Dallas Mavericks are 11-1, with that one loss being a single-digit loss to the OKC Thunder without Luka Doncic. And their most recent performance was a statement game, blowing out a Houston Rockets team that was on an 11-game winning streak. And Houston probably should have known what was about to happen when Luka was doing this in pre-game warm-up. And the craziest part, that wasn't much different to some of the shots he made during the game. Luka has done this to many teams this year. What? What? And this was just another day at the office for Luka Doncic. Because as you can see here, he's made it a habit this season to absolutely demoralize teams as quickly as he can. And when Luka wants to demoralize a team, Team, he does more than just fill up the stat sheet. He's going to make it his mission to make you look foolish. Just like on this play in the first half, where he decided a step back three wasn't enough. He had to hit a step back three off the backboard. And you can actually see him nod his head after the shot, like to say, yeah, I meant that. But if you think that's a reach, well, later in the same half, this time inside the arc, he hit Jabari Smith Jr. with a combination of moves before once again going off glass. This was in addition to the shot I already showed you, which would probably be the greatest highlight of most players' careers. For Luca, however, he's had about a dozen shots that rival or exceed a one-handed floater from 21 feet out. Now there is one other player I can think of who could pull something similar off. Oh, that's right, he's on the same team as Luka Doncic. But before we talk more about Kyrie and Luka, this resurgence from Dallas has been led on the back of their defense, with them ranking fourth in the NBA on defense over the last 12 games, which is largely a product of the Mavs surrounding their all-time great shot makers with length and athleticism. Just take PJ Washington, for example, who has struggled shooting the ball so far as a Maverick, but he's been consistently good on defense. Here he is isolated against Jimmy Butler. Jimmy tries to lower the shoulder against PJ to no avail. He then pivots on a dime into a fadeaway, which PJ contests perfectly without fouling. And this is the highlight of PJ's defense, moving his feet well and then using his length to make shots more difficult for opposition stars, like here against Shea, where he does exactly that. But what makes him so unique is he not only moves his feet really well, he's huge. So on this play, when matched up against a seven-foot monster in Lowry Markkinen, he's still able to effectively contest his shot without fouling and force the miss. Having this size is also useful off the ball, like here where Sabonis and Fox run the pick and roll. Gafford traps Fox, which leaves Sabonis in space, so PJ has to rotate over to help using his size to force a jump ball. The Mavericks haven't consistently had a guy who can help help over in the paint, but also hold up on the perimeter aside from maybe Maxi Kleber a few years ago. But the difference was Maxi had no one else to partner with him in the front court. The Mavs now have two guys in Gafford and Lively who are not only much more of a defensive presence than the likes of Dwight Powell and JaVale McGee, they're also perfect fits next to Luka and Kai offensively. Take this play for example where Lively sets the screen for Luka. Luka gets the defender on his back and pours here. At Wemby's size, if this was someone like Dwight Powell in this situation, Luka wouldn't be able to put the ball out of Wemby's reach on the lob. But because of Lively's athleticism, Luka is able to put the ball where only Lively can catch it. And just watch that in slow-mo to understand how absolutely unbelievable his passing is. That is centimeter perfect. It's a similar premise on this play, where this time it's Gafford setting the screen. And this is just cruel 
from Luca. Because realistically, with Barlow's positioning, he could go straight to the rim in this situation, but he chooses to throw it up to Gafford, embarrassing the Spurs defender and getting his big man a bucket in the process. And these plays are so important because it's not just the two points he's getting from easy lobs, it leaves the opposition big man with a level of indecision. They don't want to give up the easy two points on the lob, but if you don't at least try to shade over to Luca, then he's scoring every single time. And even when a guy like Victor Wembanyama, who is seven foot four and hedges perfectly, Luca can still put the ball in a spot out of his reach. Oh, and when you are finished dealing with what he does, you can try and defend Kyrie Irving, who is casually averaging 25, five and five on 49, 41, 90 splits. Just ask Luca about how good Kyrie is. Oh, he's the Batman and the Robin. Now, granted, we all know Luca is Batman, but it's been very noticeable how much of the chemistry is continuing to grow with these two guys, not just on the court, but off it as well. Just listen to what Kyrie had to say about Luca. I'm lucky, fortunate enough to have one of the best to ever play the game in Luca with me. And that's not just saying it because he's here, but I'm not going to gas you up. Bro, you are. We push each other every single day. It's even got to the point where Luca is throwing lobs and to got George back peddling, and it's Kyrie with wow, the alley wow, wow, finish wow, from wow. Luca. But more than just the chemistry between these two, Kyrie has been immense all season. Just look at him against Trey Jones. He faces him up at the three point line, jabs once, jabs twice, and then on the third time goes past him, stops, waits for him to fly by, and then ever so casually knocks it in. This is the beauty of Kyrie's game. It's move after move after move, but at no point does he ever look out of control. Again, a fast jab into a low crossover, and it's a step back jumper. There's a reason so many players call him the most skilled player ever, because his combination of footwork and ball control is something out of a video game. And with this being said, if there is one part of his game that remains underrated, it's what he does without the ball in his hands. Just watch him on this play. Ludort is shadowing him off the ball. So Kyrie motions like he's going for the handoff and look at the brutal cutback before getting a wide open jumper. He genuinely crosses people over just as well without the ball in his hands as he does it with it in his hands. Oh, but he can do better than what I just showed you. How about this time with Trey Jones guarding him? Kyrie gets him to bite once, setting him up for the second cut, which leaves Jones in the dust and with Vassell helping over, he is able to reverse the layup around him. And if you need any more evidence, just look at him cross up Davion Mitchell to get the handoff and then at full speed attacks Sabonis for the baseline jumper. I don't know what's more beautiful to watch, Kyrie Irving playing on the ball or off the ball. Luckily for Dallas, either one of them is just as dangerous. <laughs>